Hello and welcome to this Azure tutorial where we're going to set up a MS SQL database inside Azure. We will also create a Blazor server app where we will install Entity Framework so that we easily can go and create some tables inside our Azure MS SQL database. So the first thing I will do is to go to the resource groups and in here I want to create a new resource group that can contain the resources for this project. So one of the resources we're going to create is the database server so in this case we want to use the azure subscription one that's okay it might be called something else on your account but it's basically just who pays for this service or for this resource group and all the resources that we're going to put inside this resource group so in this case i just want to call it db project and the region east us is okay so i'll just go and say review plus create when the validation has passed we can just go and say create down here so now that we have our resource group let's go and create the actual resource so in this case when you open the menu we want to go to the sql databases and then we can just go and say create sql database if you already have some databases then just go up to this tab and say create so inside here we again have to choose the resource group and we already created it it was the db project and then we want to go and give the data Database a name so let's just go and call it for my db project then we want to choose a server and we don't have any server right now so we want to go and create a new server and basically what this means is that what we're creating now is actually just the sql database we're going to create but we do need a server to actually run it so we just want to go and say create new and let's go and call it my db server and i think this has to be unique as you can see the specified server name is already in use so let's just go and say four nines maybe and now we can go and use this if it doesn't work for you just go and maybe add a nine more or just call the server whatever you want then we want to choose a authentication method and the options that we have is that we can only use the azure active directory authentication or we can go and use the sql authentication or we can go or use the both in my case i only want to use this azure active directory authentication so we do actually have to create an account that can be the admin as you can see if we click on set admin we do get uh, our own account here but and microsoft account members are not allowed to be admins so we do need to go and create a user i don't have any user here we can go and use so what we want to do now is to actually just set this on hold and we want to click on the menu and then down here we have the azure active directory but if you just click on it we are going to remove all this that we was going to set up so just go and hit control and then hit the azure active directory tab so that we're going to open it in a new tab so we still have the process open here where we create the server but we just want to go and create a user now so inside the users we can see here that we have our user which is the account that we are logged in with we have our microsoft account user and that was the user that we could not use to put as admin on our server so we're going to create a new user and we just want to say create new user and in here we have our domain and we do also have the option to create the name of our mail so let's just go and call it alex in this case and my display name will just be my name then we want to go and also generate the password as let's go and see it and let's go and copy this and i'll just put a note so that we can go and save this code if we're going to need it so just minimize this again and hide this and we do want to enable the account so let's just go and say review and create and as you can see the properties is set to be a member so the user type is going to be member and that's okay so let's go and say create this user and now if we're going to refresh this and i do believe that it will take a small amount of time before it actually created the user so after a refresh on the page here i actually got the user that we created so now we have the user that we can set to admin on our server so let's try to close this and say set admin and now you can see we have the new account here so i'll just go and choose that one and say select and then let's say okay so the next thing we can do is to to say if we want to make this a sql elastic pool and what this allows us to do is actually just to have multiple databases but in this project we're not interested in it so let's just go and say no then we can go and choose the compute and storage 
So we want to go and configure the database. And I actually think in this case that we could just go and create a basic one. Of course, the more powerful you want your server to be, the higher package you have to choose. But in my case, we can just set a basic one up and say apply. And if we scroll a bit down, we can see we also have the storage redundancy, the backup storage redundancy. And I think it's okay, the geo redundant backup storage. So the final thing we have to do is just to go and review and create this SQL database then you can go and review it and we just want to say create so it will take a minute or two to set up so we will just wait until it's finished so now when the server is set up let's go to the resource groups and let's go inside our DB project resource group because in here we can now see that there has been added two resources there is a SQL database and we also have the SQL server. So in here, let's go and open the SQL database. And actually in here, you can see the server name that we're going to use to connect to the server. You can also go and click on the connection strings here to show database connection strings. So if we click this one, you can see we actually have a lot of different connection strings that we can choose from. And that makes it pretty easy to know how the connection string looks like when we try to connect to this database for example when we're going to use entity framework so that's actually just to show you the connection strings but let's go back to the db project so that we can go inside our server because an important thing is to go to this azure active directory over here to make sure that we have our admin set to this user so when we know these things we can actually go and open sql server management studio and from in here we want to choose that we want to log in with the azure active directory universal with mfa and then the username is actually going to be the email that we created here that we set as admin so let's say connect and of course i get an error here because we have not set the server name to our azure server so again let's go to the overview tab or actually let's go to the db project here and then open our sql database instead because it was from in here we could just go and copy the server name so let's copy this and go and put it in as the server name and say connect we do then get asked for the password to this user and in my case i auto generated it so i just saved it in this note file and that's actually for now so let's go and copy this and paste it and say sign in we do then get prompt to create a new password so let's say the current password is of course this one and then let's see if we just can go and say this is the new password instead and say sign in okay so it should be eight characters long so let's just go and add the 75 also and let's try again and to this tab we just say next and i actually don't know if this is a requirement because it asks us to go and update and install the latest version of microsoft edge but of course it is microsoft they want to have us to use edge so i'll just try and close this window and if it all goes wrong then i'll try to install the newest version of microsoft edge okay so i installed the latest version of microsoft edge it didn't make a difference but what i found out is that we're going to have to go to the menu inside azure here and then go to azure active directory and then in here we have this properties tab and at the bottom we can see here that your organization is protected by security defaults and that's actually something that we want to disable to make this work so go and say manage security defaults and then we're going to say disabled and let's just go and say another reason that we disabled this or actually let's go and choose this my organization is unable to use apps and devices so let's say save and say disable so now let's go back to sql server management studio and let's just close this window say okay and let's try to connect again then we of course want to log in so let's go and copy the code again paste it in and we actually get an error where we say where it says that the connection was denied since deny public network access is set to yes so we just want to go and set this to no and so let's say okay and then inside azure let's go to the resources that we have and then let's go and click on the sql server because in here we have the options in the menu under security that we can go and click on this networking and this allows us to edit the settings for the public access to our server and as you can see it is actually disabled that there should be some public network access so what we want to do is to say 
selected networks instead. And when we scroll down, we also want to make a firewall rule so that we are able to go and connect to this server from the IP address that I have. And it really should just say your own IP address here so that your specific IP address get access to entering the server. There is one thing that we have to notice about this, and that is when you have a public IP address, if you just on your private network, then it might change sometimes if you don't have a static IP address. And you usually know when you have a static IP address because it costs a little bit of money to have the same IP address all the time. But let's go and click so that we add our own IP address to the server and so that the firewall will let us in. You can go and make your own rule name here, but in my case, I'll just go and say save the changes here. So now let's go back to the SQL Server Management Studio and try to log in again. And as you can see, this time we actually get access to the database. So let's try to click on databases and then you can see we have the database called MyDB Project. And if we expand Expanded, we can see that there is no tables right now. So because we're looking directly into Azure, sometimes when you try to expand these things, it will take a little time before they actually expand because normally we used to just play around with it on our own PC and everything will just open instantly. But when you have to connect to a server, maybe on the other side of the world, then it will take a little bit of time. So now we should be good to go to create our Blazor server app because now we can actually see the server that we created and also the database. So let's go and open Visual Studio 2022. And I'll just go and say, I want to create a new project and this should be a Blazor server app. So let's just say next. And it actually doesn't matter what you choose. If you choose a ASP core web app instead, then it's also okay because you can also use entity framework in there, but I'll just go and use the Blazor server app. So I'll just go and call it Azure project and say next. And in this case, I just use the .NET 7 version. So I'll just say create. So first of all, we have to install identity framework to the project. So let's right click the project and say that we want to manage NuGet packages. We then want to go to browse. And as you can see, I already have the packages right here. I have the Microsoft entity framework core, and I just want to choose the latest seven version because I use .NET 7. If you use .NET 6, go and choose the newest .NET 6 version instead. But I'll just install this one, say I accept. And I also want to go and install this Microsoft Entity Framework Call SQL Server. And again, also the newest seventh version. So I'll just say install and say I accept again. The last thing we want to install is this Microsoft Entity Framework Call Tools. And this allows us to use the add migration command inside the package manager console so that we can just go and create a object or a model in our project and say that it should add it to the database as a table. And that is how we're going to test it in this video and how we manipulate the database. So let's go and install this and say I accept. And then what we want to do is to go to the data folder. And here we want to right click and say that we want to add a new item because we want to add our app db context file. So let's say add. And right now I just copy and paste it in the code. So as you can see, basically what it's doing is that we have our app db class and it extends from the db context class that comes from identity framework. So this gives us all the functionality inside our app db context to act like a db context. And then I go and dependency injects the i configuration so that we can go and use this underscore config, which is a i configuration. And what that allows us to do is to go inside our app settings file and get the connection string. And in this case, it will get the connection string that is called database connection. And we will go and create this in the app settings.json file in just a moment. So it will get the database connection string and use it for the SQL server to actually create the connection. We do then also want to create an employee model so that we can create a employees table inside our database. So first of all, let's go to the app settings.json file because in here we want to add the connection strings and also this one, the database connection. So just after this allowed hosts, we want to set a comma and then we want to include the connection strings. And in this case, we just call it database connection. And then we actually want to go and include the connection string that we saw in Azure to connect to the database. But before we do that, I just want to go back to the app db context file 
and then want to hit Control Alt on this employee because we're going to generate a new class called employee in a new file. So let's go and click on this one. And now you can see that it is okay with the employee now because we inside our data folder created this employees model. So I do just want to go and create an ID, a name and a title for the employee. So I will just say prop and hit tab because then it will create a property for us. The first one should be an int, so that's okay. But I want to call it ID. And on the next line, we want to write prop again, hit tab and say that this should be a string because it is a name. And in this case, let's go and hit control D so that we duplicate this line because we want a string again and we will just call it for title instead. So now when the employee is set up, we can go back to the app settings file because now we want to go and fetch the connection string. So back in Azure, let's go to all resources again and then we want to open the sql database because it is from in here that we can see that we can go and fetch the connection strings so click on this show database connection strings and i actually do think that we have to use this one because we need to enter a password so we will just copy it to the clipboard and go back to the project and put it inside our database connection the only things we have to do now is to go and change the user ID and then the password. And the password, we just got it in here in our note. So I'll just go and copy and paste it. And the username is the one you can get if you go back here and let's click on the server instead and say Azure Active Directory. Then we could see that we have our admin name and it was this one because this is the user ID. So let's just copy this and go back to the project. And instead of this, where it says your username, we're going to paste it in. So as you can see here at the end of the file, it actually messed up the connection string because it put it in here, say active directory password. So let's just go and delete all this. And then I just think we manually will go and make a new double quote because then we want to go and make a backslash in front of these two double quotes so that we escape them. And then back with the connection strings, we can see here that the string inside that I want to have is the active directory password. So let's just go and copy this and put it inside. So that should be okay for now. So now let's go to the package manager console to see if we can get it to work. So first of all, we want to say add migration and we want to give this a name. I'll just call this one for init and let's hit enter. So it created the migrations file as it should. So now let's go and see if we can update the database. So we say update database and hit enter. And it looks like everything went smooth. So it says build succeeded. It applied the migration and then it said done. So let's go back to the Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio and let's try to update this database and let's see if there has been added some tables. And now we can see that the Entity Framework Migrations History has been added and we also have our Employees table. So if we right click the Employees table and we say Design, we can see that we actually got the ID, the name and the title. So from now on, you can actually just go and use Entity Framework to update the tables inside the database directly from your project and it's all with a ms sql server that is running in azure so i think that's all for this video so go and have a nice day